Good morning, boys and girls. Let's get ready for Saxophonics Lesson 119. <clears throat> the materials you need for Lesson 119 are Worksheet 119, Decodable Reader Number 44, Robbie's Apple Pie, and a pencil. The standard for the lesson says that the student will know and apply grade level phonics and word analysis skills in decoding. And what that means is all of these things. You're going to know digraphs, consonant digraphs. You're going to know how to use sneaky E. You're going to know how to use vowel digraphs. You'll know that every syllable must have a vowel sound to determine the number of syllables in a word. And then you'll be able to decode two syllable words uh, following the rules that we've been studying. So that's what this means. Our essential question says, how do I show that I know all these rules? How do I show that I know and can use grade level phonics and word analysis skills in decoding words? Decoding means reading it. Okay, let's go over our rules. A vowel followed by a consonant is short. Cut it with a brief. An open accent of vowel is long. Code it with a micron. A vowel followed by a consonant and sneaky E is long. Code the vowel with a micron and mark out sneaky E. A digraph is two letters that come together to make one sound. Okay? When we're trying to spell a word that's got the k sound in it, we use K before E, I, or Y. C comes before A, O, U, or any consonant. But when we're going to spell K at the end of a word, in the final position, we use digraph CK if it comes after a short vowel. We use plain old K if it comes after a um, consonant or a vowel digraph. We use KE if it comes after a long vowel. And we use C if it comes at the end of a word that has two or more syllables. When we're spelling the V sound at the end of a word, we always spell that with the letters V-E. The floss rule says when a one-syllable root word with a short vowel sound is followed by the sound F, L, or S, we use twin consonants, FF, LL, or SS, most of the time. When we're going to spell S at the end of a word, we use SS after a short vowel because of the floss rule. We use CE after a long vowel. And we use SE after anything else. The rules for spelling with the letters J and G. When we hear J, we use J if it comes before A, O, or U. When we hear J and it comes before E, I, or Y, we use G. When we're spelling ch at the end of a word, we use trigraph, T-C-H, if it comes after a short vowel. But we just use plain old C-H if it comes after anything else. If it's a long vowel, a digraph, a consonant, whatever. The only time you use T-C-H is if it comes after a short vowel, right after the short vowel. Can't be anything in there in between. All right. If you want to add a consonant suffix to a word, just tack it on the end. We don't have to drop anything. We don't have to double anything. Just put it on. Oops, I had it two times. But if you're going to add a vowel suffix to a word that has sneaky E at the end, you got to drop that sneaky E and then add the vowel suffix. Now, sometimes we have to double the letter that's at the end of the word before we add the suffix. When the final syllable of a word, and see, these are just like one syllable words, so that's the final syllable. When the final syllable of the word is accented and ends with one vowel and one consonant, you're going to double that consonant before you add the suffix, the vowel suffix. All right? Um, so let's read that one last time because I want you to know this. When the final syllable of a word is accented, and ends with one vowel and one consonant. Double the final consonant before you add what kind of suffix? A vowel suffix. Okay. Now, when we're going to spell j 
at the end of a word, we use, just like with trigraph TCH, it comes after a short vowel. Trigraph DGE comes directly after a short vowel. But it comes, GE comes after anything else. All right, these are our, um, we're getting ready to get into the syllable division, but this one is just about vowels. Open, unaccented vowels usually have the following sounds. A usually has the schwa sound. E, O, and U usually say their long sound. And I usually says it's short sound. Now, let's take a look at the syllable division charts. This is the VCCV pattern. Uh, a syllable division pattern always begins and ends with a vowel. So you label the vowels, then you look between there and label the consonants. If you have a VCCV pattern, you divide it between the consonants and code each syllable. When you have a VCV pattern, usually we divide it after the first vowel, but not always. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you have to divide it after the consonant. So you just have to try it out. All right, this is the VCCV, CCV pattern. And that's the VCCV pattern that really occurs twice in the word, but that center vowel is in both patterns. We just divide it between the two consonants in each syllable and then code the rest of it. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the VCCCV pattern. You label the vowels and consonants as always, but then you look to see if you have a blend or a digraph in those three consonants. If you do, you don't want to divide it between the blend, between the two letters of the blend or the digraph. We want to divide it not between them. So PL is a blend. So we don't want to divide it between the P and the L. We want to put it before the P. All right? Now, let's do our decks. I need a sip of water so I don't start coughing again. Okay, I'm ready now. Are y'all ready? Do it with me. Here we go. Trigraph DGE. Trigraph TCH. Combination AR. Digraph AY. Digraph AI. Trigraph IGH. Ghost letter digraph WR. Ghost letter digraph GN. Ghost letter digraph KN. Digraph PH. Digraph O A, digraph E Y, G, digraph A W, digraph A U, diphthong O U, diphthong O W, digraph A O W, digraph U E, final stable syllable T I O N, diphthong O I, diphthong O Y. Digraph E A A Combination U R Combination I R Combination Q U Q Combination O R Digraph C H Combination E R Vowel Y Final stable syllable T L E Final stable syllable G L E Final stable syllable FLE, final stable syllable PLE, <clears throat> final stable syllable DLE, final stable syllable BLE, V, J, digraph OO, digraph SH, Y, X, I consonant E, E consonant E, O consonant E, U consonant E, A consonant E, W, U, digraph E, E, digraph N, G, digraph T, H, digraph C, K, E, 
M C K R H D T P S L O I N Z B F keywords lotion shun mouse ow cow ow oil oi toy oi butter er turtle er straw all faucet all bird er quilt qu horse or star r bottle toll bugle go ruffle full staple pull candle dull bubble bull vest jar j giraffe j bridge j hook ooh. tooth ooh. glue ooh. shark sh yarn y box x wagon w umbrella a uh. banana a uh. unicorn u q u ring mm. thimble th feather the fish f phone f elephant e eh. thread e eh. equal e candy e key e concrete e sheep e leaf e monkey m mm. balloon b kite k cat k duck k dog d sun s circle s rose z zebra z alright let's get our next hat rabbit r wreath r goat g cheese ch patch ch hat inch i light i dime i icicle i cry i overalls o soap o hose o bow o octopus a hay a acorn a cake a rain a steak a apple a tent t nest n not n nat n pig p lion o suffix s suffix ing suffix ed suffix y suffix less suffix ness suffix le suffix es sight words i come some friend the said who into do to you your color what from are of there there does goes then put want was where to done one sure won't don't brought thought thought bought would could 
should school says give have live they people love move many any other another brother mother only something answer were early earth heard learn word work world once today together tomorrow again for because America animal country stranger change strange danger often rough tough enough very every all right Let's take out our um, worksheet. And let's do the spelling sound section. Of, oops, I went right by it. Okay. Number one. Oh, let's start with a good one. J. J. Echo. J. Number four, echo, ng, ng, digraph, ng. Number five, echo, t, t, t. Number six, echo, z, z. Number seven, echo, mmm, mmm, in. Number eight, echo, ah, ah, oh. Number nine, echo, w, w, w. And number ten, echo, uh, uh, digraph. Oh, oh. Okay? Now, let's spell a couple of cult words. Okay? Rem uh, remember wild cult words. Remember what those are? When you have a wild cult word, you have an I or an O followed by two consonants. Okay? Number 11. Most. Most. Alright? M O S T. Most. And number 12, cold, cold. It's not cold outside anymore. K -O -L. All right, C comes before A, O, U, or any consonant. Well, we hear K and then O, so it's K, O, U, D, cold. Okay, pencils down. All right, we need to echo these words and listen for the sound that's the same in the medial position. Echo, field, thief, yield. Field, thief, yield. What did you hear in the medial position of all those words? 
E. E was the medial sound in those words. All right? Now, well, let's look at them. Sealed, thief, yield. What two letters do you see that might be making the E sound in all these words? I, E. All right, what do we call it when we have two letters that come together to make one sound? A digraph. How do we code a digraph? We underline it. <clears throat> now, we only heard one sound. What sound did we hear? We heard E. So what, we're, what are we going to do? We're going to put a macron over it and then mark out the letter that we don't hear. All right, we're going to put a macron over the E and mark out the I. All right, this one's finished. So is this one. All we have to do here now is underline digraph TH. Okay, so these words are field, thief, and yield. All right, now echo these words and listen for the sound in the final position. Echo, tie, lie. Tie, lie. All right, what sound do you hear in the final position? You hear I. All right, let's look at these words. Tie and lie. What two letters do you see that might be making the I sound in these words? Digraph I-E. All right, so we're going to underline it, but what are we going to mark out this time? We're going to mark out the letter that we don't hear. We don't hear the E, but we do hear the I, so we're going to put a macron over it. Okay. Now, these words don't need any other coding. All right? So, one thing I will tell you, digraph I-E is not a regular spelling, so we're not going to add that to our spelling response or when it says I or when it says E. We're, you just need to be able to read words that have that in it. Okay, so let me show you the um, new cards that we have. All right, so when you see this, you're going to say, digraph I-E. All right, well, the first one, we're going to get two new cards because we have two sounds. The first one is a kind of dessert. It comes in a round pan, and you might put ice cream or whipped cream or meringue on top of it. And favorite flavors for some people are apple, pumpkin, lemon. My favorite is peach or pecan. What do you think it might be? Pie, I. Okay, pie, I. All right, the other keyword is something that knights from a long time ago used in battle. Um, along with their swords, and they had it on their arm, and it was to protect them from other people hitting them with their swords. And if you watch cartoons and some of these shows that have superheroes, some of them probably have these. What do you think it might be? It makes the E sound, by the way. Shield. Shield. It kind of hooks on your arm right here, and this, this big piece of metal and that way, if they were in a sword fight, the per other person with a sword couldn't stab you with it. So that's the point of this. Shield. That's what that was. Okay. Now, let's go back to the worksheet. All right. Now, let's practice spe spelling some words with the long I and the long E sounds using digraph IE. <clears throat> All right, number 13. Let's spell the word pie. Pie. I also made a strawberry pie the other day. It was really good. Pie. 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 All right, number 14. Lie. Lie. Wool. Lie. Lie. And the last word is field, field, 
crops grow in a field. All right, so we have, now we hear E, but it's going to be digraph, I-E, and then old field. All right, now let's code our words. Here we have digraph I-E. This time it makes the long I sound as in pi. This time it's digraph I-E that makes the long E sound as in shield. Okay, now let's take a look at our words. We'll start with number 16. See digraph I E. Now, when C comes before E, I, or Y, it's going to say S. So we need a sedilla. All right, we're going to mark out the E. All right, now, is it going to be nice or nice? It's going to be nice. So we're going to put a macron over the E and mark out the I. Because nice is just N I C E. So this is nice. The next word rhymes with it. This one has a soft C. So we put a sedilla, mark out the last E, underline digraph I E, mark out the I, put a macron over the E. And that word is peace. May I have a piece of pie? Peace. All right, this one is a compound word. Number 18 is. All right, so we're going to divide it between the two words. Whoops, I didn't mean to. those balls when people are trying to hit a home run. Outfield. All right, let's look at number 19. It's a compound word as well. Divide it between the two words. Underline digraph SH, underline digraph IE. Mark out the I, put a macron over the E. Now, normally this, you're going to think, oh, that's a wild cult word. No, it's not. This one is a vowel followed by a consonant is short, coat with a breed. Wind shield, wind shield. That's the big glass panel at the front of your car to keep the air off of you when you're driving. Wind shield. All right, and the last one is also a compound word. So we're going to divide it between the two words. Underline digraph CK, mark out the C, put a breathe over the E. Underline digraph IE, mark out the E, put a macron over the I. What's that word? Necktie, necktie. And so we draw a line from the necktie to the word necktie. Now, let's read all of the words. Let me erase where you can see the words. Read with me. Whoops. Niece, peace, outfield, windshield, neck. These words. Now I see one has a final stable syllable, two have suffixes. You can do this. Once you code these words and read them, then start at the top and read all ten, okay? Alright, let's look on the back. On the back, we see a picture and we're going to look at the picture and see what we can figure out about it. Think about what might be happening in the picture, and we're going to use these words to write sentences. And if you run out of room on here, you can do it on a piece of notebook paper as well. All right, so let's read these words. Elephant, shaving, chimpanzee, bear, 
reading, juggling, tiger, dancing. So write some sentences about the things that you see up here happening using these words. And you can also uh, use these words in the high frequency box. Let's, uh, you might be able to incorporate those words into your sentences. All right, let's read those. America, very, tough, right, every, you. Okay? Now, lay that to the side, and let's read Robbie's Apple Pie. Written by Lucy Floyd. If this book is written by Lucy Floyd, what is Lucy Floyd? What do we call her? We call her the author. The author. And the person who drew the pictures is Vicki Woodworth. What do we call Vicki Woodworth? She is the illustrator. She drew the pictures. Okay. Today is the king's party. Robbie said, what can I give the king? Must be his birthday, you think? Name the king. Robbie had only a field of apple trees. All right, look back here. Here's the castle. I guess that's where the king lives. I'll make the king an apple pie, Robbie said. He cut up apples. He added nutmeg and sweet jam. He cooked the pie. Then he was ready. Now, how do you think he feels about making the pie for the king? Look at his facial expression. He feels good about it. He's, uh, maybe he's happy with the pie that he's made. All right, now let's read on. He met Nell. She said, I have a big gold shield for the king. What is your gift? Robbie looked.